with her big enthusiastic smile, can-do attitude, a taste for adventure, and a richly varied academic background, Dr. Cyan Proctor is an outstanding role model for women who want to pursue careers in space and science-related fields. A geology, sustainability professor, author of Meals for Mars, analog astronaut, explorer, and television host, Dr. Proctor was a finalist for the 2009 NASA astronaut selection process. She credits her father as a major influence on her thrilling career. I'm Jeffrey Notkin, president of the National Space Society. Please meet the charismatic, the courageous, Dr. Cyan Proctor in this exclusive episode of Views on Space, Views from Space. I feel really, you know, fortunate to be able to be sitting here sharing how I became an analog astronaut with you. That story really goes back to where I was and when I was born. I was born on the island of Guam because my father worked for NASA, a NASA contractor during the Apollo missions. And so he was at the Apollo at the tracking station on Guam and even though I, you know, I don't remember that, I like to think of myself as a celebration baby. And the reason why is because I was born eight and a half months after Neil Armstrong took those famous first steps on the moon. And so you can think about what that meant, not only to my family, but the world, and my parents celebrating that, and me being the result. Soon after my family, we left Guam, my dad left NASA, and, but that didn't mean human spaceflight left our family. I distinctly remember growing up and going into my dad's office and seeing on the wall Neil Armstrong's autograph to my father. It said, to Ed, thanks for all the help, Neil Armstrong. And so that, along with all of these other NASA certificates, to my dad really kind of, um, made me know that what he had done was special and I wanted to be a part of that. I also really loved aviation, military aviation. I built model airplanes and my, my dad and my mom really encouraged me to follow my dreams when I was a kid. And I wanted to be a military aviator and then I was going to become a shuttle commander. And, and to do that, I knew that I needed to go to the Air Force Academy. And so at 13, my dad started taking me to civil air patrol meetings and I was doing everything that I needed to do. But back in the 80s, if you wore glasses, you couldn't be a military aviator. And about 15, 16, I actually got glasses. And I knew that, that because of, I saw everything through the military lens. I saw NASA and being an astronaut through the military I didn't know what I was going to do because I wore glasses. And then a second thing that happened that really, it really changed everything for me was uh, my father got cancer and passed away when I was in high school. Uh, and, you know, he was such an inspirational force for me and the things that I wanted to do. But my dad instilled in me this love of math, science, engineering, technology. And so I went off to school and I got my degrees in environmental science and uh, a geology and my PhD in science education. And I was traveling around the world. I got my pilot's license because I always wanted to be a pilot. I got scuba certified. I did all of these things. And then one day, 20, 25 years later, I was in my late 30s, and I got an email from a friend that said, NASA's looking for astronauts, you should apply. I'd never even thought about the application process. But when I opened it up, I realized that I was qualified. I had my PhD, I had scuba certified, I had my pilot's license, I traveled and taught around the world. So I applied. And it was one of those decisions where it was difficult because I kept hearing this voice in my, in my head saying, you know, well, you're just a community college professor in South Phoenix. They're never going to pick you. And 
even though I was suffering from this little thing, you know, imposter syndrome that they're never going to pick me, I heard my dad's voice in the back of my head saying, don't, don't, let, don't talk yourself out of this, you know, let them tell you whether you're qualified or not. And I applied and I ended up being a finalist for the 2009 astronaut selection process. And it, it was the most amazing experience that year of going through the selection process, of going down to Johnson Space Center, meeting incredible people, um, making it through each stage to the point where it was a yes, no. And I remember distinctly the day astronaut Sunita Williams called me. And I was at Goddard Space Flight Center actually doing an internship and it was a no. And, and I just remember just feeling like that childhood dream that my soul had been ripped out. I'd gotten so close, so close. And there, it, it was a no. And, and the first thing that I thought was, oh, I wasn't good enough. I, I need to change myself. So I, I enrolled, within the next six months, I enrolled in a space, um, a, uh, I want to say space training program at University of North Dakota. I was going to get my advanced scuba. I was going to get my advanced pilot's license, all of these things. And I had to stop and say, you know, what am I doing here? I, I'm changing my life. I'm changing who I am to fit some narrative that I think that they're looking for. And instead of celebrating the fact that I had made it to less than the top 1% in the astronaut selection process. And so I stopped and I said, you know what? Instead of beating myself up and telling myself that I wasn't good enough and I could make myself better, I'm gonna celebrate the fact that I was almost a NASA astronaut. And then what was funny, it was that it wasn't a, a year or two later from that, me changing that mindset and really celebrating and embracing my love of human space flight that I got the opportunity to do my first analog mission. And it was in 2013 with high seas and it was a four month Mars simulation investigating food strategies for long duration space flight. And so when I think back to my history of being born on Guam and my father and his work with NASA and almost becoming an astronaut and sitting here as an analog astronaut 10 years later, I couldn't be happier with the way things have turned out.